and he wants to live, to laugh, to love, to dance. Throw him a lifeline. Throw him a lifeline. Throw him a lifeline. Oh, please. He's caught in a whirlwind. There's a raging storm.
Center family, welcome 
to the 20th annual Haven Care Center Banquet done virtually this year. We're glad that you could join us. We want you to sit back and relax and enjoy hearing some of the stories that God has done in the lives of people and how you've had an impact by your supporting Haven Care Center. We're gonna begin with a word of prayer and then we're gonna see a video showing some of the things that God has done and then we're gonna hear from our director, Tiffany Johnson. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the lives that you've rescued through Haven Care Center. I thank you for the numbers of volunteers and support that we've received over the last year. We think of all of the clients that have come in and the love that they've received. It's been love from everyone that's supported. I pray that through this service, our hearts will be stirred and you will lead us into what you want us to do and how we should be a part of such an important ministry. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I came to Haven Care Center December 2nd, 2019. I was battered, broken, very confused. I actually came to Haven Care to talk about an abortion because I didn't feel like I should be a mom. When we came to Haven Care Center, we were both really scared because before Haven Care Center, it just kind of felt like we were down on our luck. Felt like nothing would ever work out the way that we wanted to. You know, even whenever we both had jobs and we were both working, it felt like we weren't bringing in a solid income, and everything just felt like a struggle. We were dependent on other people, not living on our own. Didn't know how to raise a kid or anything about children. The the love and acceptance that I felt as soon as I walked in here was amazing. I had not felt that in my life. I really enjoyed Embrace Grace. It it made you open your mind not only to God but also to your child uh, that you were carrying. The word abortion was never used, and I chose life. And um, I have a beautiful baby girl. Once I chose life. For my daughter, I had considered an open adoption. Um, I didn't really know how hard that would be to go through with until after she was born. Now I don't even want to think about it. You know, I just I just want to parent my daughter. Your first step with us was to strengthen our relationship before learning how to become parents. We need to have a solid relationship because that's a key in being a good parent is having a solid relationship with a significant other. I felt as though that it was just something for Gina and the baby. Um, I was included more and more over time and it really made me realize my role as a man in the family and a man of the household. It's a really eye-opening experience. And it's amazing that we have this in our community and if you really do need help, I mean, help is there. And not only finding great friends and like a family environment and very welcoming. But the main thing that they have really done that has impacted us the most is gotten us a car through the Dollar Club of Southland. So right now, um, we are currently both correctional officers and we both really enjoy what we do. We work a third shift together, so we're on the same shift and we are lucky enough to get the same days off so that we can spend time together as a family um, we both have rides to work. Now that we're making good money and we're saving money and we're, you know, paying off all our credit, getting our credit sorted up, I mean, by this time next year, we should, we should be in a house that we own. I've kind of just been staying, you know, with this, with this family that, that took me in. I'm, I'm just so glad I didn't make, you know, a choice that would have ended her life. Um, I didn't expect a second child, but I, God gave me that. So I feel like I need to go through with his plan and I just hope that we have a happy and healthy home.
eh, jefes que no solo me han ayudado con mis necesidades básicas, sino que también me han dado pañales, ropita para las niñas, toallitas húmedas, sus cremas, jabon, sus jaboncitos y, y comida también para ellas. Y no solo me han ayudado dentro del centro, sino también afuera del centro, en lo que es en entrevistas con el médico, en entrevistas con el daycare y a veces con transporte también. Al llegar a, aquí nunca esperé yo encontrarme a una institución tan generosa como el Kemmer. El cambio más grande que he tenido ha sido que he tenido paz debido al apoyo que he recibido. Gracias a eso, mis niñas y yo hemos tenido un mejor vida. Definitivamente, Hevenker para mí ha sido una gran bendición. We have Spanish interpreting services available to assist with our Hispanic community. Tenemos servicios de intérprete en español para asistir a nuestra comunidad hispana. Good evening and welcome to our 20th annual first virtual fundraising event. I would rather speak to everyone face to face, but we are blessed to carry on through technology and sharing the great things God is doing. It is about being champions for life. We will praise God and honor God and glorify Him and put His name above all names. First off, a huge shout out to our hosting churches across our four counties. Thank you to the Carpenters Christian Church in Mercer County, Emmanuel Baptist in Boyle County, Grace Fellowship Church in Lincoln County, and Lancaster Baptist in Garrett County. You are in for a moving and touching story about our guest speaker, whether you're in a small gathering, hosting a church, or in the comfort of your own home. Thank you for watching this premiere, and please know that you are our heroes, and we need your support in this uncertain time. Our journey is the same, but our communication is different tonight. However, we press on, hand in hand, to be His ambassadors and defenders for life. Our work is not done. My name is Tiffany Johnson, the director at Haven Care Center. God has allowed me to be His servant and your messenger for six years. Our mission at Haven is to meet the physical, emotional, and most of all spiritual needs of people we serve. Social distance will not keep us from our mission or our vision. We seek to reach more individuals looking at all options. God's presence has not stopped during this pandemic. Matter of fact, His presence is even stronger. Haven never closed our doors. Since the beginning months of COVID-19, Haven served over 140 through our curbside assistance. We had a record of four ultrasounds performed in the month of April. We continued our peer counseling, reaching over 100 clients via Zoom and phone while sending daily devotions via text to follow protocol. Every visitor that walks through our door is our guest. We must encourage, instill hope, and give acceptance without judgment. We are honored to share and offer unconditional love while stating accurate facts on all options, including the physical and the emotional effects that abortion can have on families. God has been Haven's refuge, our provider, our unfailing leader during these months. You are the reason our doors are open for 29 years now. You give us the opportunity to welcome and love individuals right where they are. Together, we take a stand. For a baby to take its first breath, celebrate its first birthday, or provide resource for adoption. On the front lines, we desperately and seek and ask God's guidance daily. We are so weak and He is our strong tower. He moves mountains and transforms hearts. I love the chapter in Hebrews 11 when God's word instructs on faith. Faith is one of my favorite words, even though we can't see it, if we believe wholeheartedly and lie down at the foot of cross. We must have faith and know God is bigger than any situation. The awesome thing is His power prevails. He will equip us, especially if we release control and surrender. For our new viewers tonight, Haven Care was created in response to the Supreme Court decision to legalize abortion in 1973. We want God's plan back from the beginning, what He designed. My friends, we see many situations in the ultrasound room. 
especially when mom is thinking about nothing but abortion. After viewing the image of God's sweet creation, she chooses life. Choosing life is a heritage of God, and it stems from His goodness of creation. We had 16 ultrasounds scheduled this past year, and 12 chose life. We had several that were unable to carry, and there's still some that are anonymous to us. Our theme tonight is the miracle of creation, His creation inside the womb. Romans 8, 19 says, For the creation waits in eager expectations for the children of God to be revealed. Every life is His miracle of creation. One of the most beautiful sights nature has to offer is a sky full of stars. They are beautiful, mysterious, and wishes that have yet to come true. An unborn life is like a star. Although the face of the baby has yet to be revealed, all of creation knows she bears the image of God. And nature eagerly awaits for this life to draw its first breath. Our mission is to help our clients discover what creation already knows. Along with a precious unborn life, each of them was fearfully and wonderfully made by our Creator. His love for us outnumbers the stars in our vast universe, and He has a special purpose for each. You make it possible for us to help men and women explore the miracle of life. Our ultrasound ministry allows clients to see the glow of their star hidden in the womb. Our educational and support programs will equip the new mom and dad on their new journey. If they've chosen abortion in the past, we offer healing through our post-abortion ministry. Won't you join us as we help save what God has created? You can volunteer your time, donate a financial gift, your professional services, or be a church liaison. Contact us today to see how you can be a vital part of making these wishes come true. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Romans 8, 19. I'm excited to get some praise reports so you can see the growth, not through man, but through Christ and His provision over the past years. In one calendar year, we had 1,035 peer counseling appointments. We served 234 clients. Every client that walks through our door receives a love letter, a daily devotion, and a Bible. In 2019, goals were increased advertising and social media presence. Currently, through God's guidance, we have a past client who is now a dedicated volunteer serving on our housing committee. Alex Payton has been with Haven since 2015. Alex passionately stepped into the role of our website designer and Facebook manager. She is a success story. We are proud. She's a team player for Haven Care Center, and God knew her story and brought her vision to life. Male Mentor was another goal we set for last year, and it's presently being offered to our male clients. Seth Widener is the pastor at Southside Christian Church. He and his wife devote long hours volunteering at our center both utilizing their talents of peer counseling from the Lord. We are blessed to have this dynamic couple serve at Haven Care Center. They instill godly leadership in the hearts and homes of those we serve. Another vision last year was to provide ultrasounds right at our center and be a standalone medical facility having an RN on staff. I'm pleased to announce we have an RN manager and her name is Kelly Carper. I'm humbled to say God answered that prayer by adding two more flex nurses to our team. We officially became medical on April 13th, gratefully led by Dr. Kevin Pettis. Isn't it ironic, during the pandemic, we meet this go? The most ever in the history of Haven Care Center? A generous contribution came through from a love offering at Indian Hills Christian Church. Over $18,000 helped Haven prepare for the medical expenses, it's only God. Their generosity brought the vision to life. God blessed us with this amazing medical team 
Martha and Carmen attended a conference in Fredericksburg, Virginia last month for additional and specialized training in OB. So we can be more equipped than ever to handle abortion-minded clients. Our last vision was to open a transitional home for families without a residence. Our Haven home was open in May and we have currently served two families. The home was gifted to Haven for a two-year term from our local housing authority. Because of our community donors, our heroes, the Haven Care is completely furnished. It is designed to meet the families where they are by setting goals within three months for the family to live independently. Let's watch a clip from a young child sharing her thankfulness. I didn't like motor room, but because it stinged it, yuck. I'm scared to sleep in my own room because I'm scared the boomerang will get me. And what did you do all day long before that? I prayed for a home. And I would just stay in my own house. I sleep in the bedroom. Hey, and we couldn't find, find, find the mailbox. Nope. <laughs> no box. Thank you for the home. God's kingdom is building. We had a worker and two clients who chose Christ this year. Here is my new sister in Christ, and she states Haven Care Center is all about caring and love. God knows our needs before we even ask. An additional blessing is Annabelle Anderson. She came to Haven Care Center last year as a volunteer, and one of her talents is translation. Thad Anderson, her husband, is Haven's IT liaison. Again, a super couple brought to Haven with many skills. God has opened the doors for us to teach in the schools on healthy relationships, abstinence, and STI awareness. But due to the pandemic, we're a little bit on hold, but we have faith God is gonna provide. Last year, we reached over 1,600 students across Lincoln, Mercer, Garrett, and Boyle counties. Another shout out to all of our golf sponsors and participants for our first annual Drive for Life. Wow, our community came together to promote life in a mighty way. We raised over $10,000. Thank you again to our heroes. Thank you to all who donated $20 in the month of April and got a complimentary t-shirt rooted and established in love. This is a great way others can hear about Haven Care Centers and the services we offer. Because of our local churches handing out baby bottles and filling them, change truly does change lives. As of today, our 2020 Bottles of Blessing totals over $36,000 despite COVID-19. All praise to our King of Kings. I would like to extend a sincere and thank you to our 2020 virtual sponsors for helping to fund technology expenses for this year's fundraising banquet. So what are our visions for this coming year? We will strive to enhance our post-abortion support. It's still a challenge. If you or someone you know is carrying a heavy burden, please have them look at our Facebook, check out our resources, find us at havencarecenter.org. Healing and forgiveness is guaranteed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Another vision of 2020 is to hire a baby boutique coordinator. We have over a thousand donations coming through our doors at Haven Care Center. It takes a lot of time to organize, sort and make our baby boutique appealing to our families that have physical needs for their baby. The next vision is to reduce the mortgage on our building. We would also like to emphasize a partnership with another nonprofit called the Human Coalition. The Human Coalition serves pregnancy centers across the United States. They are committed to rescuing families and children from abortion. When the calls come through in our surrounding counties, they act on Haven Care's behalf. Once this partnership is established, we will reach more abortion vulnerable clients. We also plan to schedule more Bible studies. It's all about encouraging others to get in His Word. 
it is our roadmap to life. We also wish to seek more churches involved or support Haven Care Center monthly. And lastly, we want to keep expanding our social media and reach those that have never heard of Haven Care Center. Hopefully, through this virtual event, others may tune in. Please share our page. It may reach someone that is feeling scared, confused, in an unplanned pregnancy, and they have nowhere else to turn. Again, thank you to all of our heroes, our churches, our community leaders, our liaisons, for helping to support Haven Care Center for the past two decades. Now it's time to switch gears to our guest speaker tonight, Stephen Thin Holland. He is a recording artist, worship leader, author, inspirational and pro-life speaker and founder of Broken Not Dead Ministries. He is sharing his message of hope and restoration for the broken built on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Stephen Thun Holland. I'm so excited to be with you all. I hate that I couldn't be with you all in person. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Haven Care Center for allowing me the opportunity to share my story as we champion life together. So my story begins as an eight-year-old child. I had some friends at school that looked at me and said, man, you are so weird and different. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Weird and different. And there's a lot like your whole family's white. Have you not noticed that? Because you are not white, you're brown. And I look at my hand, guys, and I'm like, they're not lying. They're telling the truth. I'm a brown, I'm brown. Something is not right here, right? So I, I had a little freak out moment. I, I was, I was, well, to be honest with you, I was hurt. I was broken. That's the first in my life I remember being broken. Um, so I come home and I'm sitting on the edge of the bed with my mom and I just wanted to go to sleep. But uh, God had another plan and she had another plan. Um, she looked at me and she said, son, you are not laying your head on that pillow till you tell me what happened today because I know something went down. And the floodgates just opened up. I started to weep. I started to cry. I told her what happened. Uh, she sits down on the edge of the bed and she pulls me in so close, like only a mother can do. And she said, son, I want you to know something. I love you. You are my son. You've always been my son and you always will be my son. And then she says, hang on just a moment. So she, she gets up off the edge of the bed. She walks over to the closet and she pulls this folder out of this box. And um, in the folder, she sits down and opens it up and there's eight pages of typewriter paperwork. And there's about a, maybe a, a couple hundred pages of her journaling over the first five years of my life. And it was something that she wanted, she was holding until this moment came to where she could gift me with this. And I never realized how powerful that moment was and her what a gift that would be, that folder. Um, but so, I, so what she tells me is this, um, you know, Stephenton, we brought you into our family when you were only seven days old. We got you when you were on the same bottle of formula you left the hospital with, uh, Human Services. We brought you in as a foster child. At Human Services said that he probably will not make it. And they, they wanted us to know that, but we still said yes because you're worth it. And uh, wow, man, you talk about the tears flowing as I to have somebody tell you that you're worth it and they love you. Even though I was not their blood, I was their son and they, they brought me into their home. They said they squeezed milk into my mouth uh, when I was too weak to suck a bottle and, and I was too weak to, my legs were drawn up into my body. They never put me down. Some people might say I'm a little spoiled, I don't know. Uh, but I'm thankful for them. They fought for my life uh, when even some people, it, would say that it's not worth fighting for. And I also had a birth mom that fought for my life. So this theme, is, as I think about this, I, I wanna fast forward a little bit, is when I get to college, I, uh, I meet the love of my life. Her name is Rachel. And uh, we, start, we start a friendship and then quickly we realize that you know, we, we wanna be more than friends. We started dating and we started talking about a family and what that would look like. So in June of 2006, Rachel and I got married and uh, very quickly we decided we wanted to start a family. So within two months she had gotten pregnant. Uh, we were so excited to bring a child into our family and eight weeks into her pregnancy uh, she has a miscarriage and we lose our child. Uh, man, it's so broken. Then, But we have a successful pregnancy with Isabella. She's 13 today. And then we have 
uh, our third uh, third pregnancy, and in the third pregnancy, 10 weeks into the pregnancy, we lose another child. So now we've had two miscarriages, and, and I'm, I'm asking God why. She's asking God why, but I'm internalizing, Lord, you know, I, I was adopted. I don't know my race or ethnicity. I don't know my, fa- my family history. I don't have any medical history. Lord, are we losing these babies because of me? And I was so hurt and broken. And in the, in the midst of, uh, we actually are on our fourth pregnancy now, and that's Eliana, who is our, our 10-year-old today. And we also have a seven-year-old, Cadence. But during that pregnancy with Eliana, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, it's time to look for your mom. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I already have a mom. And he's like, no, it's time to look for your birth mom. So I go into this box that I had been storing this folder for many years. I pulled that folder back out that my mom gifted me with when I was eight years old. And I open it up and I take that paperwork and I get on Google and I start name searching because God said it was time. So within three days of looking online, I found a website for a man named Steve Holt who just happened to be my birth uncle. He's a magician and ventriloquist from Spartanburg, South Carolina. I send this guy an email. I'm 27 years old and I say, I think I'm your long lost nephew. And uh, I'm, you can imagine reading that email, right? But after that, we I jump on a plane. I fly up from Tampa, Florida to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I get to meet my birth uncle for the first time, 27 years old. And he proceeds to tell me, the story that I longed to hear. Why would a a mother give up her son? And he said, my baby sister, your mom was 18 years old in a mental facility. She, they, she would walk to work back and forth. They allowed her to do that. And one evening she was actually raped by five men, um, took her innocence. And from that encounter, she got pregnant with you. She's in this facility and with no home, no money, no family. And they look at her and say, listen, probably your best option is to abort this child. You can't provide for it. And all I can tell you is that God is bigger than that. God's bigger than society and their views of society because there was a purpose. And she said, I'm a mother of a child, even only functioning as an 11-year-old mentally. She said, my son is worth fighting for. And she carried me homeless. Uh, for almost the entire pregnancy until by the end of the pregnancy, she was living in a cardboard box in a little town called Whitwell, Tennessee. If you're from there, it's Whitwell. And there just happened to be a family in this town that had had a miscarriage of a little boy two years prior to me being born. And God had opened their hearts to bring uh, one more child, one more son, one more boy into their life. And uh, man, God had a bigger plan that none of us could ever see or even imagine. So I'm learning all this and finding all this out in a moment. I mean, right there, just life laid out, right? This is how you got into the world and what this woman did for me and this family did for me. And actually a community of people, 800 petition letters fought for my life for an adopted family to bring in a biracial child. But I want to go back to that conversation with my Uncle Steve. I, that, I mean, that's a powerful story, right? But the story doesn't end there. He said, your mom, your mom, my baby sister is alive today. She's five hours south of where we stand right here in this moment. And this is what he asked me. He said, do you want to meet her? And without hesitation, what the spirit had, of the Lord had spoke to me two years prior said, it's time. And that's exactly what I said. It's time. Can we go? So we actually jump in a car, drive five hours south to actually meet my mom for the first time. So here's what I want to do tonight. I want to allow you the opportunity to meet my hero, Glenda Sue Holt. I love my sunshine, and I love my life, and I love all of y'all, and they'll forgive me. Amen. 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 All right, well, we hope you enjoy our magic show and our song and dance. All right? We got a song. And Stephen's going to sing for us. Well, I got a song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a I want to show y'all how good God is. Glenda, you stand up here. Come here. 
I, was, I wasn't going to do it this way, but we are. <laughs> All right. Glenda Sue. You know I love you. I love you. Um, you have been through a whole lot. And you've been the best girl you could be for 46 years. And you had a little boy when you were about 18. And you missed that little boy. His name was Stephenton William, but he had a different he has a different last name. The family that you gave him to to take care of him, their their last name was Holland. So his name is Stephenton William Holland. And this is scrapbook for you and he has in the scrapbook he has pictures of him remember the picture you carried of the little boy you thought was your son but wasn't really your son but now you have real baby pictures of him and you have pictures of the Holland family Mr. and Miss Holland that raised him he has a lot of family and they love you. They've always loved you. Son, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I love you deeply in my heart. And I, I want to say I'm glad that you're here today. And Mama loves you. And I am from this first time that you was in my belly. I sang to you. I read nursery rhymes to you. I remember all that. And this is your Mama right here. And I love you, my son. And um, I want to show you something that I've learned. I love Jesus, and I want you to know that I love my family. And I know now I have a real big family that I can look forward to seeing. Wow. Isn't God just amazing? You got to see my hero, my mom, Glenda Sue Holt. Uh, she's just an amazing person. Uh, I'm so thankful for her. And I'm also, just to transition, I know that tonight I get I had the blessing of sharing my story and, and I'm thankful for that, but we're not here just to, to hear my story. We're here to champion life and support Haven Care. And um, it, it just amazes me to think about, like, just imagine, what if my birth mom, my hero, Glenda Sue, what if she would have had a place like Haven Care to go to for help, to go to for support, that she didn't have to be on the streets alone carrying this child. Now, obviously, God's plan is bigger than our situation, and I get that, and His plan worked out perfectly, but I'm so thankful for places like Haven Care that women can go to for support, and I see the value in that. But I also see the value in this. I know that Haven Care every single day is fighting for life, championing life, changing lives, saving babies, impacting mom's lives, and not only theirs, but sometimes when dad is present, they're impacting their lives, which trickles over into actually, you know, kind of like water. It flows into the whole family's life. It, they are doing life-saving and life-changing work. So I want to encourage us, anyone who is hearing this tonight, on this video that they are worth supporting because it is worth the fight. Life is worth the fight. I had a birth mom that fought for my life that I would not be here tonight standing in front of you. I also had an adopted family that fought for my life. I was literally on death's doorstep on the same bottle of formula from the hospital as a seven day old child and they squeezed milk into my mouth 
They never put me down, right? Like I said, I'm a little spoiled depending on who you ask. But I also had a community of people, as a matter of fact, 800 petition letters that were written on the behalf of this family to keep this child in their home. Because the state of Tennessee, back in the 80s, they saw this biracial child in a white home and thought he would be better in another home, another color, biracial, African-American home. But this family didn't see color. They just saw a child. They, they saw through the lenses of Christ and they saw love in their heart or, ex, or expressed love from their heart. So tonight, it's worth the fight. Haven Care is worth supporting. I want to encourage us to do three things. I want you to think about your time. I want you to think about your talents. I want you to think about your treasures. How can we use those three to support this amazing organization? Maybe through time and talent, uh, you can give, you can volunteer. I know that the staff of Haven Care would love for you to reach out and see how you can support. So I would encourage you to think about that. Be thinking about ways to support them. Reach out to them and maybe they can send you a list of some ways you can get involved. The other and the main reason we're here tonight, it is, I'm telling y'all, it's worth the fight. This organization is a beautiful organization that you are blessed to have in your community. And we need to stand up arm in arm with them to champion life through our treasures, giving of our treasures. So tonight I want to encourage you. You can give one time, a one time gift tonight. And I encourage you to do that. Whatever the Lord has laid on your heart to give to support them, you can do that. There's some information that's going to be on the bottom of your screen, uh, a, a link to give to, as well as more information in the comment section on whatever platform that you are viewing this on. And if you need more information, reach out to Haven Care. They will be glad to give it to you. But not only that one time gift, but I want to challenge you to do something. The lifeblood of any nonprofit organization is to have monthly support, consistent giving, so they know they don't have to worry about where their support's coming or if it's going to be here, so their work can continue. They, they know they have that reassurance. So I want to encourage you to give monthly, to set up a monthly giving plan. You can do that through the information provided at the bottom of the screen again, the link provided in the comment section. But however you choose to give, I want to encourage you, it is worth the fight. This organization is worth supporting. Again, if people wouldn't have fought for me and saw worth in me, I would not be standing here in front of you tonight. So again, I want to say thank you. Let's support Haven Care and God bless. Thank you, Stephen Finn, for your wonderful message of hope and life. And thank you also for telling our viewers and our audience just exactly why we need their support. That's where I come in. My name is Patty Cox, and I'm the financial director here at Haven Care Center. I'm here to tell you just how to fill out your donation form. So if everyone will pick up their Miracle of Life donation form and follow me, we will begin by completely filling out the top portion of the form, including your email. This will help us to keep you informed on Haven Care Center's progress and so that we can send you our email newsletter on a quarterly basis. If you would like to make a one-time donation, please fill out only that section under your contact information. You can choose how to do it by paper check tonight or by automatic bank debit or by entering your credit card information. Any of that same information can be used to continue your giving on a monthly basis. If you choose to support Haven Care Center on a monthly basis, please indicate when you want the auto bank draft to occur each month and which month you want it to start. Please indicate the same if you decide to use your credit card instead. The only thing we ask is that if you no longer wish to donate to Haven Care Center on a monthly basis that you give us a call so that we can stop the withdrawal at the bank or through our credit card program. Please remember that we will continue your monthly gift until you call us to stop it or to change the amount. So, by example, if you chose one of these options last year, we will not stop your gift until you tell us to do so. 
Now, the very last option, and probably the easiest, especially in today's technology savvy society, <laughs> and if you are watching from home, is our website option. Go to havencarecenter.org, click on Donate, then click on QGive. That will take you directly to the form. Fill out the form in its entirety and you're done. At that same time, you can choose whether you want to make a one-time gift, a monthly gift, any of those, and how long, what time of month, whenever you want to make that donation. Finally, we want to know how you feel about tonight's event, so much different than the 19 years prior. Please take a moment to fill out this section and let us know what you think and what you think could be made better. I would like to, at this point, introduce Jeremy Gillum, who will close Haven Care Center's 2020 virtual fundraising event with prayer. Patty, thank you so much for sharing that information with us as to how we can invest in this incredible ministry. My name is Jeremy Gillum, and I'm the pastor of Journey Community Church here in Stanford, Kentucky. On behalf of Haven Care Center, I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to enjoy this year's 2020 banquet. It's been our first ever digital banquet, and we're so thankful that you took time out of your busy schedules to join us for this. It's my prayer that whatever the means are, that you have uh, found motivation through uh, tonight's event to invest into the ministry of Haven Care Center. It is your opportunity to truly uh, speak for the sake of life. So whether it's through prayer, whether it's through volunteerism, or through giving, we would love to see you plug in to this incredible ministry here at Haven Care Center. I'd like to give an opportunity as you are considering prayerfully what that investment is that you would like to give this year. So as we pray together, I ask that you join me as we ask God for clarity uh, concerning our investment into this incredible ministry. Father, we're so thankful for the opportunity uh, Lord, that we had to be a part of this year's digital banquet. Lord, thank you for every individual who has uh, uh, who has spoken tonight. And God, thank you for those who have taken time out of their schedules to watch. Lord, we pray that uh, we would be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit tonight. Uh, Lord, we know that this ministry is incredible. It's life-changing. And Father, we just pray that we would... Uh, just develop a passion for what you're doing here. Uh, God, we thank you so much for the opportunity that lays here at our feet tonight. Lord, I pray that we would be obedient to your voice as we invest in this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us tonight for our 2020 Digital Banquet.
they crash over me. Oh, I want to trust you, Lord, but my fear is crippling, crippling. But you say, trust me, trust me, trust me and walk. You say, trust me, trust me, trust me and walk on the way, on the way, on the way. to the fire, but those flames, they rise high and high and high, but you say trust me, trust me, trust me and walk, you say trust me, trust me, trust me and walk. Through the fire, the fire, through the fire, the fire, the fire. So I wait. 